We live in a multicultural society and within our multicultural society we have many, many different groups. While the original founders of this country can claim that they come from a Christian heritage, it's no longer the case. And in fact, the recent results from the current census tell us that around one quarter of the Australian people now identify as no religion. The fastest growing religion uh, is Hindu uh, in this country today. But state education is not about religion, and never has been. From the very earliest foundation of 1872, the Education Act said that our, our education should be free, should be compulsory, and it should be secular, quite clearly secular. Even though we have foundation principles based apparently on Judeo-Christian values and ethics. Now those Judeo-Christian values and ethics are values and ethics that are common across all cultures and all religions about being kind to your neighbour, not doing to someone else that's something that's hateful to you, uh, being generous, being charitable, uh, not killing people, not harming people. They are not religious values, they are humanitarian and humanist values that are shared through all humanity. Uh, and uh, to claim that those things are particularly and uniquely Judeo-Christian is actually insulting to all those other cultural heritage groups that we have in our country, in our state schools in Australia today. When it comes to religion and enrolment at a state school, there is first of all the uh, question that the form asks as to what the family's religious affiliation is and then second do you want your child to participate in the special religious instruction program. My husband and I chose not to put our children in the religious instruction program but despite that my daughter did in fact end up in the class for a short time. I was made aware of that when she came home asking me whether or not God had, whether I believed that God had created the trees and her uh, and from that time I went back up to the school to ask that she please not be put back in the class again. Let me now say something about making disciples of our children and young people through ministry in schools which is what I'm involved in. The first step in becoming a disciple is clearly believing but so many of young, our young people have never heard the gospel they will not hear it unless we go and tell and make disciples of them. In Australia, we have a God-given open door to children and young people with the gospel. Our federal and state governments allow us to take the Christian faith into our schools and share it. We need to go and make disciples. Never before have we had such an open access such an open door. Christians from other countries envy our opportunities. They can't believe we have this situation. There seems to be some people in the church who are afraid of education. And I don't know why they should be, given its history, its long history, of the church establishing schools and universities. They've always been interested in education. And now for some reason, just recently, um, in recent history, they've become afraid to, uh, to allow real education to take place. And they revert to the forms that we had back in the 1950s about uh, volunteers, well-meaning, volunteers going in teaching the faith. The situation, contemporary Australia has changed dramatically from that and the church uh, for some reason won't change either to go along with it. In my view it should uh, and it should have better training for these people. Uh, I think it should have better, uh, a better understanding of what general religious education is, what a serious 
rigorous academic religious study actually entails and it's not about gaining adherence. It's not about gaining disciples. It is about educating people in the ways of religion. I believe that this is the greatest mission field we have in Australia, our children and our students, our greatest field for disciple making. There is an enormous amount of Christian ministry going on in our schools, both at state level and at national level, both in government and non-government schools. But we must ask how much of that ministry is actually resulting in Christian conversion and discipleship growing and resulting in church growth. Let's be honest, what we've got at the moment is a system where um, it's not really focused on education here. You know, I, I'm actually, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not against religious education, I'm actually in favour of it in the sense that if it's looked at from the education point of view, we can learn about the different faiths out there in the real world, it's not just Christianity. Um, you know, we're living in a community, in a society where people follow all sorts of different faiths. And it would be great for our kids to learn about that, actually. You know, the more knowledge we have, the more power we have as a society, and the less ignorant we are of each other, of our neighbours and of the people uh, who are living around us. So that's the education side of it. What we've got right now, if you ask me, it's, it's, it's quite obvious to me that the motivation behind that. Um, look, it's being done by a ministry group, as you and I both know. The problem with that, it's, it doesn't really matter what they're even teaching in the classes. The problem is, what's the motivation behind this? At the end of the day, they're kind of coming in there, not from an education perspective, but in the back of their minds, they're surely thinking, wow, well, let's present our faith here to all these school kids, in the hope that even one of them will be saved and will embrace um, our faith instead of whatever path they're following. I don't think that's actually relevant to education. That's a different thing altogether. Today is Access Sunday, it's the 15th of May, and therefore it's the time to celebrate God's hand across our schools. So remember, it's God's hand within and across our schools through the commitment of Access Ministries. Now, that's not always overt. CRE workers are definitely there to present the Gospel, um, to present Bible stories. Chaplains, it's not always as... Um, overt as that. It's much more covert. Um, particularly in the climate of today um, with the politics that is going on and um, just the nature of um, small groups that have different worldviews and they're quite powerful in their voice. So there, there is a lot to be considered. Um, and of course Access, Access Ministries does represent God so it's going to be attacked. In my late teens, I was uh, heavily immersed uh, in, um, in Christianity. Um, I was leading youth groups, uh, Bible studies, prayer meetings, uh, uh, Easter camps, um, church services, and uh, Christianity uh, was the Alpha and the Omega for me. Um, I had a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and I accepted him as my Lord and Saviour. Uh, part of that meant uh, uh, living out the, the faith um, in word and deed. Uh, to that end, I uh, became a CRE teacher as well. Uh, as, a, um, as a teacher, I went and taught at a state uh, primary school and um, I did one day's training at the Church of Christ Theological College in Mulgrave. Uh, back then it was the, the Council of Christian Education, now known as ACCESS. And uh, on that basis, I, I was able to go and, uh, and teach about Christianity to kids uh, at primary school as well as the other avenues where I was focusing my, my efforts on. Uh, and for me the biggest driver was of course that we had this wonderful God-given opportunity to, to be able to share uh, and make this, to share, the love of, share the love of God, um, the message of Jesus Christ and his message of salvation and, and be able to impart that knowledge um, to a child. For most kids, church is an irrelevant option, only 5% on any given Sunday. How will these students come to Christ, come to church and become disciples and make disciples of others? What takes place in our church services is so different to what is happening in the real and virtual world of our students 
that in order to disciple them, our own paradigms have to change. And much of our thinking about ministry and schools has had the goal that our students will be contacted, converted and discipled in order to link them up with the local church. However, we've got to say this isn't working. I would imagine that the Head of Access Ministries does not speak for all Christians, certainly not all teachers who are engaged with students in this pursuit of how do, how do we religiously educate people. So I would imagine that um, while well, she might think that she speaks for a whole group of Christians, that that's not true. Look, there's always ways we can improve what we're doing in this country and as a society. What we can learn, like when I grew up in England, I went to school there in the 80s. Even back in the 80s, um, it was being done in more of an educational way, the religious education over there. I can remember, yes, we did learn about Christianity and that may have been the, uh, the main focus of what we did there. But I specifically remember we learned about other faiths as well. Um, I can remember there was a class where all the kids in my classroom learnt about the Sikh faith. And it was a really good feeling for me as a child actually. It gave me a lot of confidence because after seeing that, they would then be coming up to me and say, wow, that's really cool. Oh, that's why you've got long hair, you know. Now, that's how I felt as a school kid at the time. But what we can see now as a result of this program that was put into place in England in the 80s is that now that generation has grown up. They've become the adults who are leading the country today and they know about each other. It's a much more integrated society. So that's what I can you know, sort of share from my experience in England and I think Australia could, could catch up in that regard. It will be good for us. Let's face it, our numbers are in decline. Unfortunately, although some have been won to Christ through the school ministry programs, not many have made the quantum leap to church, not even to our evening services. Clearly, we need fresh thinking. There's no question that to be a Christian is to belong to Jesus' church. Membership of a faith community is vital. And our model for discipleship must include this. The opportunity to reach children and students through schools ministry is not only exciting, but incredibly logical and compelling. You know, um, it's really interesting. Um, I think it would depend upon the people who are teaching SRI, fundamentally. Uh, if they've come from a conservative Christian background, uh, i.e. they've got very sort of tenets of belief, very sort of fundamentals of the faith, the inerrancy of scripture, a literal belief in hell and heaven, uh, a belief in very sort of traditional sexual mores which often um, uh, are, are very reproachable in, in, in modern times. Um, I would say that those people would then therefore take a literal understanding of uh, Jesus' exaltation in the Gospel of Matthew to go out and make disciples, um, to go out and, and, and spread the good news. So if the fact that it's such a foundational part of their life and the fact that they want to shine the light of Christ only would only mean that it would permeate their every decision. It would permeate their, their thoughts. I mean, they would, um, from the praying, uh, from the praying they do several times a day to their uh, their moral outlooks um, to their decisions. You know, it's the what would Jesus do in this situation? So I would say if they if they've come from that background, it's only logical that they would want to um, take that God-given opportunity to go and make disciples. What really matters is seizing the God-given opportunity we have to reach kids in schools. Without Jesus, our students are lost. 3.5 million. Our churches in the West are on a slow death march. We have the opportunity to create life. It may be uncomfortable, but so what? What a command, make disciples. What a responsibility. What a privilege we have been given. Let's go for it. I do think religion should be taught in schools. I don't want it out of schools. Two, how it's done is extremely important to me how it is done. 
and the context must be taken into consideration. If it's a school classroom, a secular school classroom, you have to have an entirely different approach from a parish church or a Sunday school gathering or something like that. What you can do in a secular school classroom is entirely different to what you can do in a parish setting. And I think that distinction ought to be made and I don't think access ministries make it. I think they, they proceed on the basis that the context doesn't matter. It, the message is the same regardless of the contents in which it's expressed. And I think that's a fallacy. I think it's foolish and it's, it lacks educational uh, understanding. That's what I want to say. I don't, I don't really think their curriculum is all that important in a way. I think the curriculum in the hands of a good teacher, the worst curriculum in the hands of a good teacher can be made into something. Whereas I think uh, the very best curriculum in the hands of a poor teacher won't make any difference. So I think it's the quality of teaching that's the important thing. That's why I want the subject to be taught by professionally trained, highly motivated teachers. <laughs>